exactly the same. <laughs> Better. Oh, nice. <laughs> 85 years old. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> we, uh, we are Eric and Sean, and uh, last night one of us won a Tony. <laughs> podcast that we've been doing on Zoom yes. for months and months and months. Right. And uh, oh, just Jack and Will. Just Jack and Will, uh, where we take the show and we break it down. Uh, we have guests on, people that were on the show, and uh, guest stars. And so this was, as you just saw, the uh, season finale of, uh, of the first season. Did you have fun? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. It, like, it, it, when you hear the podcast, we, we, we might cut this out, but because we taught, we've already said it so many times. But the genesis of the podcast was Eric and I were at lunch, and Eric has seen the show a little too many times, and I've never really watched the show. He's never watched the show. So I watched this episode last night, and I was like, wow. This show is funny. You're always surprised. Every time he's like, he's gay. Yeah. Every time. Wait a minute. Pat, rewind it. Rewind that. Um, but now so so how, many, how many people here watched this episode 25 years ago? <laughs> wow. That's so cool. Wow. Thank you. Uh, it's so cool. So let's, let's talk New York for a second. Yeah. Well, let's talk to Rebecca. Thank you. Yeah, Rebecca thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. For having us here. Um, I have a William really Grace memory today that is Tribeca. There was this Would you share that with me? Uh, yeah, sure, no, because it's a podcast and we're supposed to talk about stuff. So 2005, yes. I was here with a little movie and we were waiting to find out if we had one more season. It's and it was that night. night, I got in the car, my parents had come down from Toronto and we were driving and I got, I got the word that we had one more final season that where we get to wrap it up the way we wanted to, and so that was. Uh, and that's the and that's your memory of Tribeca. Tribeca. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, because yeah. the movie was at Tribeca. Yeah, the movie was not good, but, I, uh, but the news was good. <laughs> the news was good. That's really cool. I know. Um, what do you think about? Um, by the way, Eric's going to be starring in The Cottage. This I love. We're, both our theaters are on 44th Street. So after 25 years of friendship, we're uh, we're in plays down the street. We're up each other's ass. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, okay, so now we're gonna get to a part of the podcast. Is it okay to move on? Oh yes. So now we're gonna get to a part of the podcast which we like to call just facts. <laughs> Here I am, 85 years old, still doing the same bits. Uh, okay, so this this is interesting. Uh, these, are the, these are just the facts. This is episode 122, like Eric said, it's called Object of My Rejection. The original air date was May 13th, 1999. Wow. Which is crazy. We used to make enough episodes that they would last till May. And it, now it, right. is, it, I know. Just, it wraps up mid-April, I think. And just like Prince, we partied like it was 1999. Uh, you want to take this? Look at this. So the ratings, uh, we had a 14.7 share, which is basically 23%. Of, of the audience, of the quarter of the audience, of the of the viewers in America were watching the Big Gay Show. So, it's amazing. <laughs> um, it was we were, we were number seven. We were at, by the end of the first season, right. at the very end, we were a top ten show. That's I know, pretty insane. Right. That's wild. Because uh, we, we we talked throughout the season on the podcast, which you'll hear coming up in, in the weeks to come. That we started very quiet. We weren't friends or ER. We started very quiet on Monday nights, and we were like number forty-eight or something, and built slowly. But by the end of the season, uh, we were actually had moved from Mondays to Tuesdays to Thursday. We were yeah. in the big league. And I swear to God, I was still like, I'm not even kidding. I was still like, um, I think I'm going to get fired. Like, I'm pretty confident. They're not going to keep my character. Well, I kept saying, you're, you want to keep Jack around? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so no, you're no, trying. I got to take it Okay, so then, and the show, you just said that. Uh, yeah. So this, uh, we're going to read into the summary. Yeah, well, so everyone in this uh, theater knows, because you just saw it. But for those listening uh, at home in a few weeks, um, this was uh, yet another episode where Will medals and graces. Yeah. Life and uh, and she kind of likes it. 
and, and no matter how much she complains about it, I know she wants it. Um, but the big deal, the big deal is that we've heard about Rosario all season. It was yeah. a, a gag on the phone. Never met her. This was the episode. First of all, I think we didn't even realize because it was just something that Megan was doing on the phone. Right. Or, that Rosario was a woman. Was it? Yeah. I think we were sort of dumb and no, no, we thought so. It's a, it's a guy. It's a gardener or something. So no, it's it was so the casting of this part was so important because she was so set up. And true story, I don't even know if you know this. Rosario was the name was actually the name of Max Mushnick, who created the show, of his housekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> there was a real, and then, she was my housekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rosario, for real. You had your own Rosario? Yeah, for like once a month, she came, like once a month. And, uh, and, I was, and I was like, this is so bizarre, like, Sean, but Jack, Sean, has Rosario coming in and out of his house. <laughs> like the, the, one, the person that the character is based on. It was so bizarre, uh, and also is... wonderful. And I screamed at her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That was a, I, when, I, when we asked, so how do we finish the season, our first season? And we don't know, I don't think we knew if we were coming back or not. Right. Did we? No, or maybe I don't did. think so, I don't think so. Because uh, the, the wonderful Warren Littlefield who was running NBC at the time, I think he delivered some great news to us. I, I just don't remember if it was the top of the second season. What, he basically I, picked us up for a season and a half. Right, and then what happened over the summer? We're talking about the ratings? I, we're talking about all the other stuff. When, when Scott Sasso was the president. Did you want to tell that story? Yeah. So, so, so what, happened to, what happened to us when they had, for the young people in the audience, there was this thing called reruns. <laughs> and, uh, and over the summer, what happened to us is the same thing that, was happen that happened to Friends, which was like, people didn't really watch, I mean, people watched, but not. Friends was bigger than us, but certain, like Seinfeld, yeah. uh, 30 Rock, these, they got discovered by people that had only heard about it and they found them in the rerun. So in the summer, we were getting, people were checking, finally uh, checking out the show and our ratings kept going up and up and up and up. And then I think they realized they had a hit on our hands, on their hands. So they, uh, so Scott Sassa at the time, which I always called Sammy Sosa, because it sounded so similar. I was like, Sammy Sosa, the baseball player, or the baseball, whatever. Um, sports player, yeah, player. Owner, well, I don't know what he is. And um, so he takes us off. The, such a sad case. Um, he takes us out to lunch in Pasadena. Oh my God! Do you, do you want to? Well, sure. I'll, I'll set it up. So, so I, we'd heard afterwards that Max uh, had said to the network, "They're becoming like the number one show. You guys have to do something. You have to show them love." And so Scott took us out for lunch in Pasadena because it was, there was some sort of press event. And he kept saying, anyway, we just wanted to thank you. We're like, thank you. you're welcome, thanks. We yeah. love the, the lunch. I'm eating like, you know, yeah. my And then we walked out to the parking lot. And one more time, Scott went, anyway, we just want to say thank you. And we said, we, yeah, thank you. And he, kept, he keeps gesturing. And he gestures to the parking lot. And there are four Porsches. With oh. ribbons on them. With ribbons on them. Yeah. This doesn't happen any, anymore. This was, this was, a, this was 75 crazy, years ago. And it's, <laughs> and it's an embarrassing story yeah. because to this day, people that were on other shows, like yeah. uh, Enrico Colantoni from Just Shoot Me was like, I th we got a coffee truck that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, it's, but I'll, I, I will love this because we stood there trying to comprehend that they were giving these to us. Yeah. And none of us are really car people. So it's like, <laughs> Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Sean leaned over to me, I don't make this up, and said, is it expensive to insure a Porsche? Because <laughs> yeah, I literally can't pay rent right now. Yeah. And I said, it's not that expensive if the Porsche is free. <laughs> yeah. It amortizes. But I still sold mine right away. So, so Sean, <laughs> I really did. I was like, well, I could drive a car or live in a, an apartment and pay my rent. He sold, so you sold the, the Porsche about six weeks later and it wasn't in the parking because you all were parking beside each other. <laughs> and I right. that, and, uh, and your car wasn't there, your old car was there. I said, what happened? You said, I like my Camry. Yeah. <laughs> and then Adam Barr, who wrote this, wrote this episode, uh, came out to the parking lot when he saw that I was back having my Camry and he taps the Camry twice and he goes, uh, are you not getting your checks? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, it's still an embarrassing story, but uh, God bless them. It was a, it was a wonderful so, story. writers Adam Barr, yep. 
Uh, where are we now? Shut in the uh, car too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so Adam was there. When we say from the beginning, we mean like when we shot the pilot, Max and David had written and not much changed. They still brought their friend Adam in just to pitch jokes on the floor on the night. And so funny, I was like, that bald guy's hysterical. Yeah, he's, he's he was so, a bald guy. So dry and so unpredictable. As I look at the bald guy, no offense. <laughs> I was like, Adam? <laughs> he's just come from the hospital. God bless you. Congratulations on the episode, Adam. Um, so, yeah, so our guest cast, Shelley Morrison, as we talk, we're gonna talk about Shelley a little later on when she yeah. comes in. Um, but, yes. Uh, the Fifth Beatle in so many ways. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, um, but this is, talk about this one, this is the guy that played Danny. Yeah, this is wild. Tell him. Oh, okay, so I gotta read it because, I gotta read it because, so Tom Verica, who was fantastic, um, remember he appeared in the pilot but we didn't see his face, it, it was, it was uh, Grace's ex. Um, he is now, uh, <laughs> no reading ahead. Yeah, no. Um, by the way, so these days, Tom is the head of creative production for Shondaland at Netflix. Wow. That, that wonderful fellow you just saw. Um, directing all episodes of Queen Charlotte as well as episodes of Bridgerton and Inventing Anne. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wild? Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, congratulations, Tom. Yeah. Um, and also, cool little cameo, Franklin Cover was the, was the minister in this episode. Yeah. You recognize yeah. him from the Jeffersons. Jeffersons, yeah. yeah. kind of amazing. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to show the guy from the Jeffersons. <laughs> I really, I was like, what? This is so cool. So, this, uh, Sean loves this part. This, uh, they, on this day, yeah. the day that the, the episode aired, not yeah. this day, but on this day, in 1999, the number one song in the U.S. was... Living La Vida Loca. <laughs> yeah, he was living La Vida something. And at the time, he wasn't out yet. Ricky Martin. Uh, right? He was, he was still in the girls, uh, in the videos, I think. Yeah. But I knew. I was like, girl, you live in La Vida something else. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the number one movie at the box office was The Mummy uh, <gasps> with movie. Brendan Fraser, now Academy Award winner Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Matrix, Saving Private Ryan, Prince of Egypt. Was that Disney that was like an animated? Oh movie? yeah, Prince of Egypt, yeah, was it? right, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, and one week after this episode, The Phantom Menace would be released. Boo. <laughs> No, I love all Star Wars. I'm a massive, massive, massive Star Wars. I even love the Phantom Menace. It just wasn't, right? Any fans? Yes, uh, it's not great. It just wasn't the other great. But how about the, um, how about all of those movies? Like, we're at, we're at the theaters. Well, the Mummy, Saving Private Ryan, Prince of Egypt, The Matrix, and the Star Wars people. Like, that doesn't happen anymore. They, they still release movies. What? <laughs> Sean, you can vote at the What? Yeah. Uh, no, but you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, there's no... Wow. Anyway. Well, it's amazing when you think about, uh, particularly The Matrix and Saving Private Ryan, yeah. which, 25 years from now, what movies will we be talking about that are out this week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, to this day, I have no idea what The Matrix is about. Okay. Really? Yeah, I can't, I don't, I don't, I gotta watch it again. I don't remember. <laughs> like, there's two pills and like, I don't know. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Birthdays. So some notable, notable uh, birthdays on this day, uh, the day the show was released. Yeah. Stevie Wonder, uh, director Herbert Ross, Stephen Colbert, and I love this, a little sheer coincidence of this, Tom Verica. His yeah, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> His birthday when this day, is that wild? Um, uh, all right, those are the facts. Now let's get into the episode. The facts. Okay, so... Um, when you listen to the podcast, we'll have music and then blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What we were talking about a lot through this season of, of the podcast is just, first of all, particularly through Sean, because he's every time he's like, oh my god, I have no memory of anything. Um, my memory of the first season was was Deborah and I. We started we started pretty great, yeah. but we then we found each other's rhythms, and the writers found uh, more for us. We're, they we're less cutesy by the end of it, we're a bit more argumentative. Yeah. I think we found a real kind of almost screwball uh, thing. And I, I thought in this opening scene that, that there was a lot of that there. I loved, I just loved, first of all, um, 
Peter Gursky, who was the uh, assistant set decorator on the very first season of Will and Grace, has become a dear friend of mine. Yeah. And he's the guy he, He's the guy that will come over to our house now when my wife's getting ready for an award show or something. You're like, no, no with the scarf, lose the scarf. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. scene just totally reminded me of that. He's great. Yeah, and I love, uh, I love the, I was talking about this with you on the podcast, is like, the, 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 the familiarity of you two. By the way, I'm not even kidding. Watching the show for the first time as like an outsider, like, I'm like, this show is so good. Like, it's, and I'm, I'm like, oh my God, Will and Grace, I love them. And, and you know what I mean? Like, I, He's not making this shit up. And, and I'm like, Karen is so funny. I love Karen. And, um, and uh, but, but, but you guys had this, like, I don't know what it is. Well, they call it chemistry, but it's this instant familiarity of the characters that you're like, you're just sucked into it. It's the fun <laughs> real. The fun of the show was our, our director, Jimmy Burroughs, directed every episode. Jimmy likes to work fast. Uh, in his yeah. mind, first of all, I think he wanted to get to the golf course, but second of all, he just really wanted the writers to hear what they'd written and give it back to them quickly. So we would throw the show on its feet yeah. and we would not spend six hours in a day trying to slow it. We would have something to show the writers within two and a half hours sometimes. Yeah. So, the, so the instantaneousness Particularly of a scene like that, Deb and I jumping up, and we just sort of we got the script in our hands. But it's the the, the tennis that we were playing it just got faster and faster. Yeah, and I could really see it in this scene. Um, yeah, we should we should um, wait. By the way, I have this one question on the this little trivia question. Oh yeah. Well, we do we, we love our trivia questions, which we can't really do on on the podcast because we don't have an audience. But we do tonight. Yes. Uh, do that one. Okay. Here's a, here's a good one. Um, and if you've been to the uh, to the Will and Grace exhibit that's at the Paley Center right now for the next three weeks, uh, you might um, you might know this. What was Will's apartment number? Nine C. Yay, master. <laughs> you just got it right, nine C. By the way, talk to Eric yesterday. I had no idea what it was. <laughs> I'm standing outside of it for seven thousand episodes, <laughs> looking at it, waiting to go in. No. Not only that. I was, at, so I was at the Penny Center last week, and Max and David, who created the show, were there, and we were walking through this little exhibit, and there's the door. There's the actual door. Yeah. From this end, and Max said, that's not right. It's not 9C. Wasn't it 6 something? And I said, you created the show. You wrote 9C in the script. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and sit, I told you this sitting outside the door was Cafe Jacques. I pitched a, a, a storyline a long time ago, they didn't like it, where uh, Jack creates a drink and the whole building goes nuts for it, but there's only one table. And you know, everybody, there's a line to get in. Why did you do that? Nobody awesome. listens to me. Uh, um, all right, so wait, let's do this. You want to do this? Because we got we to gotta go. move through. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, so uh, we like sometimes to recreate. This was the scene that began scene two. Ready? Okay. Do you want to have dinner tonight? I can't do it. <laughs> do it again, do it again. I am a Tony. Uh, <laughs> you want to have dinner tonight? Wait a minute. What? What's going on here? Like you? Since when? Always. I don't like where this is going. What? I just want your company. Okay, Grace has a date with Danny, if you can believe that. Oh my god, Danny Bonaduce of the Project Family? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Good guess, though. <laughs> wait a minute, Danny, Danny, Danny. Oh, <gasps> as an ex, Danny? Hmm. So how long did you wait before you told her it was a bad idea? Did you bite her head off and get to the creamy center? <laughs> there is nothing wrong with sharing an opinion. There is when you do it, Well, It's called meddling, and some of us are sick of it. What? What is everybody talking about? I don't meddle. Oh, no? Let's put Will through the metal detector, shall we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack, he's already in a relationship. Jack, he's a member of the clergy. Jack, are you sure you want to date someone with three strikes? Naughty boys need love too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> so it always knocks me out in, in watching scenes like this with, with you and I, how young Sean looks in that first season. Yeah. So, oh, and, and so, you're so freaking skinny. 
now. No, now. no, no, now. No, but, uh, no, no, I know. I was so. <laughs> you were all really. Standing. You were. Uh, no. mm. Well, you're still fit as a fiddle. Um, all right, there you go. All right, so we're in blue. We got it. We got it. I, so we've talked a few times over the course of the season about Will's office, which went away after season one because he got a job uh, at Gregory Hines' firm. Yeah. But that first season, I had my own little practice in a basement office, which was a very clever because we had we have extras walking by, and you would see their feet in the window. But I always felt very claustrophobic. That, I mean, and that's it. And that's it. It's yeah. not any smaller than any other set. I, I felt it because I believed the window. I loved it because I'm a cancer. It felt like I was in a cocoon. <laughs> you know what I mean? It felt like I was in my crab shell. <laughs> um, or was that something else? I don't know. But wait, I have. We have one other. We Right, get to the, that one thing. What is that? Yeah. Right. Um, so, wait, so, so wait, I'm well, this, to... well, this is what I was gonna say. This is the first scene. This is the first scene where we meet uh, Rosaria. Yeah. Wait, what card are you on? I'm on six. <laughs> okay, good. Um, <laughs> and well, I just I, one of the great sort of reveals because we've all we've heard all season whenever. Uh, Karen's talking on the phone to her, yeah. is that she clearly can't speak a word of English. And just the setup for Shelley to go, you hear how she speaks to me? I mean, I do. Oh, and by the way, when she says, um, you know, it's rather racist to talk to Rosario, like, yeah. sedo downo. <laughs> Which is funny, but like, I don't know that you could do that today. Maybe, you, I don't think you can, right? No. I mean, it would, but it was, it made Karen look ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, clearly Rosario is as smart and as funny. Yeah. Um, Cut all that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wait, and then, and then, uh, I love that. Wait, tell me what I was going to do. Oh, wait, talking about ideal green card. Oh, because this is the whole setup of me having to. Yes, Mary. which I always thought was one of the more clever pitches. I thought so too. That you had to that a gay guy's married married for a card, and it's fantastic. Uh, uh, so we're, we're back in Will and Grace's apartment, um, and I <laughs> I love stuff like this when Danny said to me, uh, "You still uh, still like into guys and stuff?" Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. I said, "No, no, I think the antibiotics didn't take." Um, <laughs> That made me laugh. That made me laugh. <laughs> and that great line he had about uh, being in a relationship with Grace is being in a relationship with Will. It's like a threesome and not the good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so clever. And that's the other thing I'm realizing as I'm watching it with you guys. This podcast is I'm like, my God, the writing's really good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really clever. This smart. particular scene, I think, is an awesome Deborah Messing scene. Yeah. Um, because I shut up. I said, I heard you. I'm going to shut up. And the, the connections, the synapses firing, is disgrace. Is, I know what you really mean. Oh, wow. Hilarious. Yeah, was, I love that. It was messing at her, uh, at her best. Um, okay, well, I'm moving on to the wedding chapel. Can I do a question for the No. Audience? Okay. All right, yes. <laughs> what frat boy thing does Danny say that bugs Grace? I got to blow out of here. Very good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Wait, one more, because I love these. Um, one more for the audience. What institution is Will repping on his t-shirt? Oh, nice. There's no prizes. It's good. <laughs> I remember uh, saying, like, like the, the pilot, I think I was supposed to wear some kind of t-shirt to bed. I think in the opening shot of the pilot. And I said, oh, it should have his alma mater on it. And that drives a network insane. And all these lawyers and clearances and our wardrobe woman says, we'll never get that. Said, really? Just a t-shirt with a university on it? It was, I think it was this episode before we got something clear over. I didn't know, I didn't know if it was in a t-shirt or did Will really go to Princeton? He went to Columbia. Oh, Columbia. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did he? I was right. <laughs> so clearly he was dating a guy from Princeton. <laughs> um, all right, so let's, let's so uh, the wedding. Let's talk about the wedding for a second, yeah. because this one, we, a lot of our episodes would have eight, nine episodes uh, scenes. But this only had about five because we spent a lot of time in that wedding chapel. Yeah, uh, which was hysterical. Um, I love Shelley Morrison. Shelley Morrison in that dress. That's <laughs> adorable. Fantastic. What did she say? Well, she, she looks like a. I look like a what? Yeah, I'm hitting out. That's what. Um, and that was that great, uh, hold on, where was it here, sorry. Uh, she had, um, Shelley had a great quote about that scene. Oh, yeah. And it was specifically about Sean. Um, 
This was, you know, there's a book that we referenced a lot, a great book called, um, called uh, Will and Grace Fabulously Uncensored by uh, a guy named Jim Colucci, who was just, is that, is that, is that what you read before bed? Um, <laughs> Jim was amazing, he, he's documented everything and sometimes we have to go back to it and, and to remember, it's like an encyclopedia for us. But uh, Shelley said, this was the first episode I did and it's still my favorite. In rehearsal, I'd asked Sean, while we were standing in front of the minister to play with my makeup. Then when he touched my face when we did the take, I smacked him. Yeah. <laughs> By the look on his face, you could tell that he didn't expect it. From then on, we always threw things at each other uh, that we wouldn't have done in rehearsal. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. You guys improvised a lot? Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I, I do remember that. Um, I was like, oh, that came out of nowhere, but it was hysterical. <laughs> and then the other thing that came on tape night, you know, because we rehearse every day for, for, for four days, and then on the fifth day, we taped the show. Uh, when I just, I said, Jimmy, can I do one thing? He's like, what? I go, well, the groom's not supposed to see the bride before the wedding. So what if I just pass through the camera and go, I can't see you, I can't see you. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, how do I do that? And, uh, and I just did it. Like, that was just me having a blast. Love that. So stupid. Love that. Um, and uh, also a hilarious bit when the minister says, you know, now you're going to enter into a new kind of intimacy in all of your cage <laughs> Yes, it's terrible. Oh, beautiful. Um, did you find out from the uh, <laughs> The end of this episode is interesting because it's the, it's the end of our season. And like I said, I can't remember if we knew if we had another season or not. I don't remember if we knew we were going to say goodbye or not going to say goodbye. But the, I remember Jimmy saying to the writers, they, they, they weren't sure how to finish the season, and Jimmy said, Paint yourself into a corner. He said it was always, well, let the audience go, what, huh? Um, and then he said, you got four months to figure it out. And, uh, and so they did. They basically kind of broke us up in, in that. And I love, I just love that scene, the realization that we were doing damage to each other by being too codependent. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that for the audience that, that had finally found us uh, at that point to see us um, splitting up yeah. would be almost as, as exciting as, as, and weird as seeing 25 years later us come together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guest, Deborah Messing. Thank you. Thank you. Shawnee's rediscovering the show. I've never really asked you, how much have you continued to watch it or seen it over the last 25 years, or not at all? Not at all. Really? This, this episode I watched this morning. For the first time since For the, the first time in 25 years. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, but I watched it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes just like to watch it when I'm alone. <laughs> No, I just, I think whenever it's on, you know, my wife will say, hey, it's on, let's play. and then they'll show two or three in a row, and so it feels like home movies to me. I, I, that's how I see you, Aww. you know? Aww. I know, it's nice. Aww. It's nice right. we can have that. I know. Like, I know, I think about that all the time. Like, I'm watching it going, wow, that was us. Like, like, fam like we saw each other more than we saw our, our regular family. For sure. It's just as wild. Anyway, I'm Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I play Jack. Um, and, and what did you think of, of the character, of the, the actor who did Jack? Let me tell you something. We talked about this. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was kind of a dick at first. <laughs> That's true. But I've seen, like, early on in the season, I'm watching for the first time going, why was he so mean to Will? But then it ended up being fine. Okay, so wait, I, I want to ask you guys this. I have this question because I really truly am watching it for the first time. And when and I'm, I'm not joking, like I really am at this finale, like riveted by, oh my God, they're not going to live together. Like I'm so invested. And I'm like, what do you mean they're not going to live together? Like, how is this going to, right? Like painting in the yeah. corner. 
And so let me ask you, you guys. You have to watch the season premiere of season two. Two, I'm so excited. <laughs> I, can't, I really am. I'm so excited. I don't remember, honestly, how we get out of that. I, I that's know, what I'm saying. That's what we're doing this podcast. I don't remember. All right. So wait, but so I have a question for you two. In watching this episode, what did you, did, this is a serious question. Did you guys feel like, um, did you ever fear of ever making a quote, very special episode of Will and Grace, meaning like going too dramatic or too uh, melodramatic, uh, because you never did. It was always very real. But was that ever a fear as an actor? Not for me. No, I mean, I mean the, the thing we talked about a lot though was the course of the season is just our chemistry, that it was yeah. kind of a blessing. And we both come from drama first. We're not first and foremost comedians. So um, I always loved the opportunity in the middle of something really funny to be able to be serious with you and, and have this relationship matter. I mean, I, I, we talk about that one really, really serious fight that Will and Grace have. Yeah. And Season five, yeah. He, he knows everything. I, I, it's a, it's, it's Raymond. <laughs> Season five, episode two. Okay. <laughs> Is it really? Uh, yeah, and and someone was asking me about that, and I and I was like, I was grateful for that because it it, it, it the writers trusted us with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we had earned their trust and. And we didn't have to be funny every single second, and we earned it. And we trusted them to, to do that, because honestly, if, it, if a show lasts long enough, you've got, there's gotta be some there there, there's gotta be some depth, and it yeah. can't always be a circus. And, and I, just, I loved that stuff. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember if we got picked up or not by the end? Oh, no, no. I, I don't remember I just, <laughs> we did, I don't think we did. I just assumed we didn't, because that's... The fact that it was, Scott Sasso is his name? I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just remember. I just like remember. six presidents over our tenure, by the way. Which like, is true. That's a great trivia. Can you name them all? No. <laughs> uh, Littlefield? Uh, Warren Littlefield, then Scott Sasso. No, 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 no. It was Warren, but then Garth, Garth and Sear. Garth and Sear was next. <laughs> Who was <is> that? <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't have been because the, the, no. the cars were during the summer of... of I, I, okay, we think it was Scott or Garth. I think it was Warren, Scott or Garth. Yeah. And then, um, and then Garth Brooks, which was weird. No, <laughs> uh, no and then who was after that? Uh, uh, that wasn't, um, was it, it ended with Jeff Zucker. Yeah. Right, he went to CNN. Yeah. But before Jeff, it was somebody. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, this is, this is... oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Kevin. Riley. Kevin Riley. That's right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Riveting. But I do remember this, I do remember this, because we were so disappointed to lose Warren, who had really been a champion of the show. He had not only sort of pitched the guys and said, don't worry about these other characters, write these, these sort of sidekick Will and Grace characters, and then we got you guys as, as, uh, as a foursome. But, um, but Warren had championed the show from the beginning, and he knew he was leaving. I think even we didn't know he was leaving. He knew Scott Sasson was coming in, but before that happened, Warren picked the show up. So we did know. We oh, left. We did. Yeah, we left season one because of Warren. No, we knowing, had, knowing we had a season two. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, we we must have known because they gave us Porsches. I know that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's, 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 I was saying it's just an embarrassing story, but it's. Uh, right. um, no, wait. What was I going to say? Um, something. It's oh, hard. it's hard. It's no. so hard. <laughs> um, wait, no, I was going to say. Oh. Deb, because we were that was so nice to do an episode before this one, uh, way earlier than, the, than this episode of the, uh, Will and Grace. Do you see how, how do you feel your character or you as an actor uh, progressed? Like, were there things you were less embarrassed about? Because me and Eric always talk about like how a little embarrassed we were when we first started because we didn't know our characters and we were kind of pushing and whatever. And I had that hair in the pile. Hair. Yeah. The hair. It, but, but that, it that, was, that was, I was really embarrassed. <laughs> I was like, I, it's little orphan Annie just on a longer version. And I'm, oh, your hair. Yeah, we both had bad hair. And it, it was not cute. It was not cute. But um, no, I, I, did, I did see growth. And I think it was what you were talking about, sort of the, the tennis that we were playing yeah. next to each other. And I yeah. think it, it, that came from just learning the rhythm of the show and trusting each other. And so the more we were able to do that, I felt like the performances were better. Yeah, for sure. And, and I just said this to Deb in the green room before 
she came out, I learned so much from these two chatting about the process of storytelling. And um, I, I didn't apply it <laughs> uh, because I didn't know how to apply it. But years and years later, I now call upon it because of you guys. And that that is a true story. So are you gonna cut up the Tony for us? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna melt it down in a ring, probably. Just like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and speaking of hairstyles, I think I looked from beginning to end constantly like Rachel Maddow. <laughs> it was like a blanket, like, oh, let's just make it look like Rachel. Um, but I loved it. <laughs> um, I thought, speaking of hair, I thought your hair looked amazing in this. By the end of the first season, you figured, we figured yeah, out it was cute. Hair. It was super it hot. It was cute by the end. You look really hot. I, and, I did think they that... curl it, or is it naturally curly? Oh, Sean. I know, because you're always in the makeup and hair for like forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it's girls and guys are different. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Know, Eleven I, seasons. I know. <laughs> they know. had a little thing that was called a curling iron. I know. But I thought you would like I thought when it was humid out it would curl. No, I have naturally I have I have Jew hair. Really? Yes. I've got like kinky curly, curly, curly. So in this episode, was they that had your they hair? had to curl it to straighten it out. Really? Yes. To make it smoother, because mine was, was sort of bushier looking. Yeah, but because you, you always, like, you eventually changed from straight to curly, straight to curly, so I, I lost track. I never knew if it was, which one is real. <laughs> is that wrong? 25 years. <laughs> 25 years. We've been years. friends. But, and... but do you remember when we, me and Deb did this thing, oh, Deb, what was it, like, years ago? I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was for press for the reboot. And, oh. we, and we did, like, a, like a quick uh, quiz of each other. Yes. And like, are, are you best friends? Yeah. And we had to like do answer questions about each other. All right. And write, and write them, write them down. down. Right. And uh, it, was, it was like the newlywed game. Yes. Like, yes. And so like how well do you know your friend of 75,000 years? <laughs> and so the, the woman was like, you can't look at Deborah. I go, okay. She go, they go, what color are her eyes? <laughs> and I said blue. <laughs> and they're the farthest thing from blue. <laughs> and I, because I'm colorblind. I'm colorblind. I didn't, I didn't know that. I'm massively colorblind. Really? Yeah, you want me to fly in a plane somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you could have gotten out of that question by just, just saying. I know. I thought I was going to like, get it right and not address it. But do you remember that we both came up with the exact same answer? For what again? <laughs> what was the question? With my penis size, I think. <laughs> and she got it right. Yeah. She hit it on the head. <laughs> That's a very well and grace joke. No, what was the question? Remember? I I think it might have been like, what was what was the what did we think was the funniest moment? Yes. Together. Yes, and we both said the same thing. Yes. You want to say what that was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I have a guess. What's your guess? Um. When he, I mean, when he was right. when he was dressed up as Debbie Reynolds, <laughs> and I had to learn how, he, how to stand up to her, and he kept in the face over and over and over and over again, and then what, finally on one of them I farted, <laughs> and I said I just farted. Dad, <laughs> Dad, I was. Dead. Dead. I was Crying, laughing. Wait a minute, was, but was that the live episode? Because you guys broke no. up in the live episode. No, the live one we broke down because yeah. your eyebrow. Yeah, but Deb waited until we were live on the air to hit me as hard as she possibly could. <laughs> you hit me in the forehead or somewhere, and it was really hard. And I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> and, uh, and I had no uh, um, choice but to laugh. But that was funny. That was always a that was always a little rough. Deb actually sometimes thought I was a cartoon character. <laughs> I bet she could do anything to I me. got a little excited. Yes, and so I, I, did. I, I would pee in my pants with <laughs> all of them, but it was sometimes with Deb, when we'd have, we'd have to, like a physical scene, she, one time, <laughs> one time we had to do this scene, and Deb stuck her finger in my mouth, and she pulled my face, and I'm like, Deb, you know I'm an actual human being, right? And she pulled it so hard, I was like, ow, oh my God! 
<laughs> it was funny. It was really funny. I feel like that was the Antiques Roadshow episode. Like I, you, oh. you, that's the first time I remember you getting so freaking physical and jumping up. Oh my god. Yeah. It was so funny. It was yeah, so and, funny. and now we're crippled. <laughs> it's we, true. We like our all necks, our lower backs, yeah. our hips. Our, I mean, it, but it's, it's true. But it's we're true. broken. All the physical and it was comedy. because of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but all the physical comedy, right? It really catches up to you. Oh, it does. Uh, do we want to do some audience questions? Yeah, let's do some audience questions. Um, some of you guys uh, wrote down some questions that we got. Um, so let's go through a few for fun, because uh, it's so great to have you guys here. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Self-using. I don't think uh, I don't remember that there was any sort of catchphrase that or, or line like like line that we still use. To yeah, that I could use just uh, for a laugh. I, I mean, I remember certain lines. I don't. I don't say just Jack in life. <laughs> I do have a table for three. It's just Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Though. Could you imagine how sad that would be? <laughs> but I was just did it last week. <laughs> I was thinking, this is where we were talking before about that episode near the end of season one where we were working out at the gym and, and uh, I used the, the F word. And, uh, but I had a great line that I don't even know you could do now. When you came in, you thought you were black. You, you thought that, that you were actually born black. My lineage. Yes, yeah. your lineage. And I, you came in and I said, oh look, it's the notorious F-A-G. <laughs> now I don't think, I don't think you could do that joke anymore. <laughs> But I, I imagine it's that so episode is right now. Uh, we'll, we'll cut this out, but I don't know. How many of you watched the Tony Awards? Yeah. Okay. So, this is Michael Arden's speech. Yeah. Yeah. It was unbelievable. He said he grew up. That was the greatest. I mean, the theater went crazy. Went crazy. When he said, I grew up being called the F word my whole life, and now I'm a faggot with a Tony. Yeah. 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 Everybody was crazy. It was great. Anyway, okay, so just <laughs> uh, uh, another one. Here's a, here's a, uh, here's a Sean question. Uh, from, actually from Will, uh, uh, there. Is Banana Republic still dead to Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Which store or career might Jack be working in now? Oh my God. Oh, that's a good question. I'd love to, add, I'd love to know what your answers are. Like, what do you think you'd be doing? I, uh, is Banana Republic dead to Jack? Probably not. I mean, sh I'm I love Banana Republic. Yeah, I still love Banana Republic. I Republic. still love Jake's crew, like all those things. Yeah. yeah. I think you you would have wanted to be working at Abercrombie. Probably. <laughs> yes. Probably. And you never would have made it. Right? I, never, I never would have made it because Jack probably would have been uh, had an allergic reaction to all the cologne they sprayed in there. <laughs> Remember that? Remember that? Um, I think you also have to have like visible muscles to work there. Right, right. And guess what? Not with my cookie pouch. <laughs> no. But um, but what would Jack be doing now? I don't know. I mean, the the, the reboot ended in with him finally getting on Broadway, right? Or something for like one second or something. I don't know. He probably oh god, probably still I totally forgot that. Right. What was the show you were? You were playing a sailor in it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. It I think it was a made-up show, wasn't it? <laughs> probably. Yeah. But uh, we ended up with the Statue of Liberty, and you were in your. Uh, oh my God! I remember that. You were in your. That was so cool. Say what is Um Hold on, I was looking for one, uh, the other question. You guys yeah. are really organized. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> right, look, it's number twelve. Um, we're cutting out all the awkwardness. Uh, and it's just. This for is going to sound like a kick-ass podcast when you hear it. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is what somebody. Uh, Actually, call the, this is one of the things we say at the end of the podcast. You can call or you can uh, email us with questions and we'll use them throughout uh, future podcasts. This is from uh, Lavanya, mm -hmm. who says, and she's asking about this episode, uh, Will tells Grace he doesn't think she should marry or even date Danny. Would you in real life tell a friend what you really thought about the person they were going to marry? Have you? Oh, you, me? Yeah. You're asking me? Yeah. Like, like oh, I don't know if they're asking you. No, they're asking all of us. But have you ever interfered to the point where you said, don't do it? No, I haven't. 
But luckily, I've um, a friend has never made such a tragic choice that I <laughs> have to intercede. Isn't it funny? You, I think it's only in TV and movies where people are like, if you object, if anyone objects, I object. Like, does that ever happen? But I mean, but if 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 it if a friend was going towards marriage to an asshole, I would have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's never come up. No, I don't think I ever have. Would you have a conversation? Have a conversation about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on uh, your relationship, right? It depends on how deep your relationship. <laughs> Dad's like a friend. What's your definition of a friend? You know, like, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like if if the, if the relationship like was you know decades long, you'd be like, yeah, I don't know, just mumbling. Next question. I don't think I would. I don't no, think I would. No, you would not do that. I don't think I would. You, you would not have. You you would be too scared like, to do that. Do, how do you do that? Do you just go? Are you sure you want? To <laughs> I don't know. Here's one uh, from Ali Snyder. This is uh, this is for you. Um, Ali Snyder said to us in episode 13, not this one, but in the first season, uh, you got to work with the great Debbie Reynolds, and I, I love when you talk about that. Um, I'm sure, it was such an honor. The character was incredible, and the rapport she had with all of you was incredible. I just like to hear about the experience. I know that was. For, we, we talk often about the people that played our parents because what a what an amazing piece of casting that is when they decide on it. It's usually not a one-off. Um, but Debbie was a huge, huge oh. one for you. Oh my God! I mean, when I heard that it was Debbie Reynolds, I just, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And then she showed up, and she was such a broad, yeah. Yeah. wasn't she? Yeah. I mean, like, like old school Hollywood broad. Can I tell the story? Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, she was meeting with Max and Dave about. <laughs> Playing. <laughs> oh, it's this story. <laughs> <laughs> About playing my uh, my mom, and she was very, you know, she's professional, so she was very serious, and she was like, you know, I, I really need to, I need to see the exact color of her hair because <laughs> I want it to match. And um, and Max said something like, Oh, well, your your hair seems close, and she was like. I've got three hairs on my head. It's more than what I have on my pussy. De Deborah's just doing a quote. It's just a quote. Deborah didn't say it. Don't. If I see this out on the web, I'm going to come and hunt you down. It's on the podcast. It's going to be. You can cut it. This could be. I am not cutting Debbie Reynolds' pussy. <laughs> Well, that would be super fast. <laughs> uh, oh, I love that story. <laughs> That's one of my favorite stories. Ever. She would, she's the only person that ever did this, she wanted to cue cards. Uh, we don't do cue cards <laughs> yeah. on the show. Yeah. But she not only wants them, she makes her own on the day. And Debbie Reynolds, in her already in full wig and everything, was on the ground. <laughs> Marker. And she was <laughs> And literally the paper was like nine feet tall. <laughs> and, re and remember, uh, I, I had one scene with Debbie Reynolds in, in some episode in a restaurant, Jack and, and Grace's mom. And they made the menu, Debbie had this idea of making the menu, the font and the print of the menu, like the items her lines. So she's actually, when she's looking at the menu, she's looking at her lines. But the prop department's so amazing, they put, the, you know, even with the dots where the prices is, like they write her, her lines, it's wild. I was like, can I do that? Yeah, they're geniuses. Um, I like this one, Eric, number yeah. two there. Number two, read it. Okay. Uh, from Catherine, Catherine, Regent, Re Regent? She's not here, this is, these are, these are, Mailed in. These are sent in. I know, just checking. Um, I'm curious who came up with the little dances everyone would share from time to time. Were they spontaneous, choreographed? If so, who came up with them? So I love that because we all did. We all, like, if there was some music thing, we'd all. That was so fun. Those rehearsals were so. We would pee in our pants, like, coming up with shit. But the Britney Spears one that we did, that was the actual. <laughs> That was the real thing, and, and he, he knew every step, and I knew nothing. Yeah. 
Sometimes we would have a choreographer come in for other little things. Well, for like the I Love Lucy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the yeah. big, the oh, big things. But, but the little like, bits were so fun. The little bits. Like, 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 like when you guys uh, came up with like your... Uh, but, but, that, that, uh, woo, woo. All right. That all right. thing. And like, I told you so. Told you so. Yeah. Oh, yes. I just, uh, the Britney Spears one makes me laugh so hard because of the setup of it was really, we didn't know what you guys were doing, and it was really serious, and we were like, no, we can do it one more time. Listen, it's this. <coughs> Whoops, I did it again. <laughs> it's so unbelievably sad. <laughs> do you have it right now, Sean? Can you do it right now? There's no way. Yeah. 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 I, I remember. I don't remember that, and don't ask me to do the thriller. <laughs> it's not like I remember the thriller <laughs> dance. <dinner. laughs> yeah. Like Deborah said, every bone in my body is killing me. Right now. <laughs> um, how about this last one from Sarah? Yeah. Yeah. The dialogue is, of course, great. This is a long one. The dialogue is, of course, great and witty and pointed between all your characters. But I wondered about improv, especially in that first season, as you were getting to know each other. What was one of your favorite moments where one of the other cast members really took you by surprise with one of their choices, either in dialogue or just something spontaneous in the action? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that we talked about this, Eric, before on the on the show here, is like, they were open if we had suggestions, but I mean, obviously, the, the writing was so brilliant, it was, they didn't need our suggestions, but occasionally in the rehearsal process, um, shit would come out that we, you know, I, I can't remember anything specifically right now, but... My favorite thing was just, uh, and I wish we could just do a whole evening of, of outtakes because, yes. yeah. you know, and, and for a lot of shows, the outtakes are just mistakes that get made, but we started to figure out pretty quickly that the audience that was there that night loved when we'd fuck around. Um, and when we said fuck. And when we said fuck. Yeah. So we just started to add it after a while, just, just to get a rise out of each other. I, I always remember there's some episode where Megan bursts in, right at the top of the show, she bursts into the scene and goes, what did you do to me? And I said, I fucked you? I, I, I was so dumb, but it was just, I just wanted to see her break up. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was hard to break up. Yeah, there's one too where, you know, I, I wasn't the best with my lines. I mean, we've all been asked a million times, like, you know, those stock questions where people are like, who was the worst, worst with their lines? Who was always late? Who was always like off book fast or whatever that was? But um, I was hands down the worst with my lines, I think. Really? I think so. And Eric's like a savant, and Deborah's a little bit of a savant with lines. And um, and Eric said, uh, and Megan's actually pretty great too in, in, in those first yeah. years. And, um, but there was one line where I came up with some product or something. We were in like an, a conference room. Yeah. I'm just remembering, and it oh, was yeah. the subway tush. The subway tush. Oh my God! Oh, you guys. Oh, That's you crazy. Can we take you yes. Home? Yes. <laughs> She's serious. She needs a ride. <laughs> <laughs> she walked all the way here. It was so sad. And then I had to redo her hair because of the rain. Uh, but Eric, um, I, I, Eric is probably staring at me because I was like a child, going, "What the fuck? Get your fucking lens right!" Because I. Over and over, I was like, you out of the... Uh, yeah. I was just, over and over, I couldn't get the words out. And, and, and also, Sean yeah. had a thing that he would do. If he couldn't quite remember the line, he'd sort of look over there, like, <laughs> like to give it to me, and it's like, there's cameras on me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> Maybe if I just turn really slow. <laughs> And if we broke up, if we broke up, where we could stop laughing, uh, we all did that a lot, where you get the church giggles where you just can't stop laughing. And so Jimmy Burroughs, like, who's our dad, basically, um, was like, he would get so stern. He'd go, he'd go, because he knew that was the only way. He wanted to laugh, too, yeah. but he's like, we had to move on. He's like, shut up, do it now, do it right now. You have to move on, you gotta do it. And then I would scare the shit out of me. Well, I guess the fun's over, so here we go. And then he, uh, and then later he'd laugh. He's like, I was only saying that to get you to get, you know, moving on. 
Yeah, Dad, well, Dad had the big, the biggest outtake, which you guys may have seen on YouTube, when the young nurse was, was yeah. trying yeah. to... Yeah. Oh, and, she, and she had the line where you said something about oh. her, because she was so young. She was like, would you drive here on a big wheel? Yeah. And she said... And she had this brace, and she said, oh, I don't drive. You know, I, I, I tried to take the test, but it's all like, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and this one never would do. I think we did 11 takes. We just could not. And then finally you could hear Jimmy off camera going, Come on, Dad! <laughs> Come on, messing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't try. I keep taking the test over and over again. Uh, this is hard. I haven't memorized because you guys did 275 takes. So over and over. Jennifer Elise Cox. She was so funny. Oh, oh my god. And she did it exactly the exactly. same way. Every single <laughs> time. That was so funny. <laughs> Actually, to, a, apropos of that earlier question, that is something that I will use occasionally in my own life. It's just go, that. This is hard. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I, I, I was saying it really quick and then we gotta go, right? I know. Was it? Go ahead. Wrap up. Wrap up. They can see that you're saying that, Chuck. This is what he said. He thinks he's invisible. Uh, no, I'm just going to say that that line had become so infamous with some of my friends back home in Chicago that after a few drinks, this is years and years and years ago, we would say it to each other and it would escalate so <laughs> high that it went from. Oh, I don't drive. I get right from where she did it to like an hour later and 75 drinks later, too. Oh, I don't drive. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Well, anyway, um, this was not hard. This was yeah. easy. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for standing in for us.